In this video, I'm going to show you how you can automatically populate your Superbase tables with live blockchain data. So I've used Morales Streams to set up a listener on the Polygon Mumbai testnet for my account two on my test MetaMask account over here, 0x5DAD. So anytime any live Matic transactions are sent to or from this account, we should get our table to update with a transaction hash, the value and the from and to address. Let's give this a go. So opening up MetaMask over here, let's use my account two to send some Matic between my accounts, for example, to account three over here, let's send 15 Matic, press next over here, then go ahead and confirm this transaction. Let's wait for this to process and go through. Boom, that happened very quickly. And now as we return over here, we got the live transaction updated over here. We got 15 Matic with the trailing 18 zeros signifying the decimals on the native Matic currency. We have the transaction hash if we want to check it out on the Block Explorer, which should have all the same information. And we have the firm address, which is my account two, and the two address, which is my account three, all stored live on my Superbase data table. You can use this to track NFTs, ERC20 tokens, your favorite DAOs, anything live on the blockchain can now be stored in your Superbase tables. If you're interested in how to do this, stay stuck in and I'll show you exactly how. All right, of course, to get started, you want to set yourself up with a Superbase account and then create your project. I have one over here. So let's open this. And then going over here into the table editor, let's go ahead and create a new table into our database. So this will be the table we want to store our Morales streams in. So let's call it Morales streams. For now, we'll disable row level security because this will allow us to use our edge functions to populate this function. Of course, you can set up your own rules to allow your specific edge functions to have edit access to your table. But for this simple demonstration, we'll just disable them. Then let's go ahead and create the columns that this table will have. So we'll have the transaction hashes, they'll be in text format. So we'll set text over here. Then we'll also we can remove this, we can add a column, call it the value that was transferred and that will have that as a text value as well. Of course, you can modify this to whatever you want that you get back from your Morales streams. But for us, we'll have the transaction hash, the value, the from, and then the two addresses of the transaction. We'll set these types to text. So when we make the edits, when we get our webhook from Morales streams, we'll get the transaction hash, the transaction value, the from address, and the two address, and we'll populate them into this data table. So let's go ahead and save this. It's adding our four columns to our Morales streams data table. And look at this. Now we have a hash, a value from and a two. Very, very simple. Now we have a place to store our data. Next up, let's go ahead and create ourselves an edge function that will populate this data table. So for that, let's jump over into VS Code. Here I have a empty directory called Superbase Web3. Let's open up the terminal over here and go ahead and install Superbase, MPMI Superbase. So this will install the Superbase CLI for us. And we can get started by logging in to our Superbase account, MPX Superbase login, not MPC, MPX. So let's change that C to an X. So now you're prompted to add your access token and you can get that over here. When you go to your main Superbase page, you'll have your access tokens over here. You can generate a new token. You just copy this token and paste it over into your terminal over here. I've, I'm already logged in, so I won't need to do it. But now as you're logged into your Superbase account, you can go ahead and create a new function. For that, what we'll do is run MPX Superbase functions new, and then what we want to call the function, we'll call it webhook in this case. And look at that, we created a new function at the Superbase directory functions. And if we open this up, the webhook folder has a index.ts. So it has a little bit of boilerplate code for us. We can go ahead and close down this file structure, remove the comments out from here, remove these comments out from here. And we'll go ahead and start editing this function over here. But first, before we do that, let's go ahead and open up the marketplace over here for extensions, get Dino and make sure to install your Dino marketplace. And then after you have that, go ahead and initialize a Dino workspace, enable Dino linting and enable Dino unstable APIs. And that should get you sorted to start off and not have any error messages over here. So what we're going to want to do here is let's close down this pop up over here and initialize a Superbase client. So we're going to go ahead and call it Superbase create client and it'll take two arguments over here. And actually to be to, to be able to have access to create client, we have to bring in the Superbase JS library in and you because we're using Dino, if we check out the docs over here for the JavaScript client library, if you're using at runtime in Dino, you can just copy this from over here in the Superbase documentation, jump back into Visual Studio Code, 
paste it in here. And now you have that. And checking out the docs again, what it takes to initialize it is your Superbase URL and Superbase key. And where we get those is jumping back into our project dashboard. We can go into the project settings, the API over here, and you'll have your project URL. We can copy that paste that into the first argument. And then the second one was our public anon key over here. So let's copy that. And here you also see that if you wanted to bypass those role level securities in your function, you could actually use this secret role key over here, but we won't be using that now. Paste this over in here. And now we are ready to start populating that table we created. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove everything above the request.json. So when we send that webhook from Morales to this edge function on Superbase, we, we're going to get a body object with some keys. It'll have a confirmed key, which will tell us whether the webhook is confirmed, whether the transaction in the blockchain is actually confirmed. And then we'll get a transactions array with all the transactions that occurred in that block. So we're going to parse those from the request.json. And then we're going to go ahead and give a try like so. And we're going to check if the webhook is confirmed. But we're actually going to make sure that it's not confirmed because we're always first going to get a non confirmed webhook. So it'll be easier to present it in this tutorial, but you want to have this as confirmed. And then we're going to go ahead and await Superbase from the Morales streams table we created Morales streams like so we're going to go ahead and insert a new object with all the column names. So we have a hash and that will be from the transactions array, the first element and the hash, then let's go ahead and get the value. And I'll actually show you what this object looks like when we create the Morales stream in our admin dashboard on Morales side, but now just go with it. The two will be the two address. And then finally, we'll have from from address beautiful beautiful and what we can do here as well is we can parse if there is an error so const error so deconstructing the error variable from this right to the database and if we find that there is an error if error we can go ahead and console log dot error console dot error and the error message. So then in our Superbase logs, we'll get the error. And we're going to do the same thing to end this try catch loop, we're going to go ahead and catch. If there is any error, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing as here in this if statement console log this error. And that is it. That is how simple it is. Now, the final thing is Morales expects a 200 status okay from wherever it sends the webhook. So we have to make sure we return a new response where we say, for example, okay, is true, and then a status of 200 status 200, like so. And that is it. Now your super base edge function is ready. And it's ready to start accepting webhooks. And as it gets webhooks, it gets the body of that webhook, and then populates the data as long as it has a hash value to address and from address to the Morales streams table. That is as simple as it is as it is. So now let's go ahead and deploy this. So we're going to run MPX superbase functions deploy webhook, we're not going to require a JW token. So you're going to write no verify JWT, then we're going to get the project reference project dash ref. And how we get that is we jump back into Google Chrome, we have it over here at the top and you have it over here as well. So we're just going to copy that jump back into Visual Studio code paste it in here. And now press enter, and we type functions wrong, we just type function. So let's go to the bit where it says function, add a s over here, press enter, and it's building our webhook function, and you've deployed your function. That is how quick and easy it was. So now as we jump into Google Chrome, we can press our edge functions and look at this, our webhook edge function is created, we can starts looking at all the logs, any of its invocations, and in the details over here, as we go to the homepage, we get this URL we can use when we're creating our Morales stream to paste as the webhook URL. And now what's left to do is create the, creating a blockchain listener Morales stream on the Morales admin dashboard. For that, I opened up this new tab with Morales.io. If you don't have an account yet, you'll be prompted to create an account. But after creating an account, you can jump in to your Morales admin dashboard. With this completed, navigate over here into the sidebar, and you have this option for streams, and you can create a new stream. Let's go ahead and create one, we can create one straight from 
straight over here in the Morales add-in dashboard. Or if you want a bit more flexibility, you can use the Morales SDK to create one in your local environment. So let's create one from over here. And for this, you can start listening to anything, the OpenSea Smart Contract, Aave, One Inch, whatever, or simply just one of your own wallet addresses. And that's what we're going to do in this case. We're going to get our account to over here on the Polygon testnet. Let's copy that. Let's use that address and start listening to this address. And now Morales sets up the initialization for us. First of all, let's go ahead and scroll over here to step three, where we select the network. As you saw, we're on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. So we'll only be listening to Polygon Mumbai testnet. And now as we're still in demo mode, we're actually listening to any of any interactions happening in this wallet on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. We can just keep the description tag as demo. We won't pass the webhook URL yet. As we'll scroll down, let's go ahead and change it to only native transactions. You could listen to NFTs being transferred, ERC20 tokens. We'll just be listening to the native Matic being transferred. And then this is outside of the scope of this video, but you could add advanced options, filtering of which blockchain events you want to listen to. But that's for another time. We have more videos on the YouTube channel if you want to go through that. But now as we have this set up and it's in demo mode, we can test it out. So anytime any native Matic is transferred out of this wallet or into this wallet, a new webhook should be fired and we should get the data over here in the sample terminal. So let's go ahead and send some native Matic transfer between my accounts just to account one Let's send 3.2 Matic. Okay, let's confirm this transaction. And now as that's sending after it's sent, we should get a new object over here. And let's see what it looks like. And that's faster processing that MetaMask itself, you see over here, confirmed false as we have to wait a few blocks until we can confidently say that this transaction will stay on the blockchain. That's why we set that confirm state in our edge function. But you also see that we have this transactions array that we parsed in our edge function. And in the first object of this array, we have the transaction hash, we have the value, and we have the to and from addresses. And that is exactly what we used over here. We parsed the transactions and confirmed keys from our body of the webhook. And then we use those to populate our Morales streams date table. So now everything should be working perfectly. As we go ahead and jump back into Google Chrome, let's go ahead and set this into production mode. And we can set production before we set the webhook URL where we want to send this. So the super base ed function. So we go over here to our super base dashboard, copy the webhook URL, jump back to Morales, paste the webhook URL over in here. And now we're ready to go into production. And we're waiting. If this goes away, you know that it was successful, we can go check out the invocations of this, there should be an initial invocation that sending an empty webhook. And look at that, that was there was one successful post request sent over in here. And if you check out the table, it wasn't updated with data, because we didn't have the confirmed state. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and jump into MetaMask and make another transaction. Let's jump over to account one over here, send some Matic back to account two. And let's say for example, 3.1 Matic, press next. And now this is processing, let's confirm. And after this has processed, we should be able to refresh our Superbase date, data table, and we should have the information of this live blockchain event updated into our database. All right, that completed. And let's go ahead and refresh. Seems like something went wrong over here. It didn't update our data table. Let's go check out our edge function. Go over here, see, check the invocations. We got one post request. So everything seems to be working fine on this front, but for some reason it's not updating the database. So let's go check out what's wrong with that. All right, so I noticed a very unfortunate typo I made here, it took the closing bracket and didn't close it over in here. So what we had to do is close the Morales streams data table name over here. So now everything should be fixed. If we go ahead and save this, we can go ahead and deploy it again. It's super simple. You just run the same command, and it automatically updates this webhook. And now everything of it should be working phenomenally. So this is a good way also for you to see that updating your webhooks and the data that the edge function computes is very, very simple. So now back, jump back into Google Chrome, we can go ahead and check out our table editor, jump into the Morales streams data table, and go ahead and try this once more. So we jump into MetaMask over here, we're on account one, let's send some Matic transfer between my accounts, account two over here will receive 2.8 Matic, let's go ahead and send this and then finally confirm this transaction, it's pending. And after it's done, we should get a refresh of this database. Look at that. 
we get the transaction hash, the value, the from address, which was our account one, and the to address, which is our account two. So we have our account one over here, Xerox 42, just sent 2.8 Matic, 2.8 Matic with all the decimals. And then our account three, two is Xerox 5D, Xerox 5D, and the transaction hash is at this over here. We can go ahead and expand this. Let's copy the cell content and jump into the Polygon Mumbai Testnet Explorer. Like so, we paste the transaction hash over here, search that, and we get the exact same information. 49 seconds ago, from my account one to account two, we sent 2.8 Matic, and that's automatically stored in your Superbase data table for you to use at your convenience for your front end projects, whatever projects you are working on. So that is how simple it is to listen to any blockchain events and store that information in your Superbase tables. I hope this video was informative for you and I'll catch you in the next one.